Dear friends in Christ, welcome to all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today is a special Sunday as your Reverend Pastor Clarissa is ministering in my church, Emmanuel Community United Methodist Church, celebrating in two services. And here I am, Jerome Sahabandu, minister at the Emmanuel Church, ministering at one service. <laughs> I kind of like that also, once in a way. Anyway, uh, uh, welcome. And uh, today is the day of the Lord. As you always say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. And today is also a special Sunday. We celebrate the scouts today in our church. And it recalls me when I was growing up youth in Sri Lanka, where I come from, I was serving in the scout troop and recalling that the motto of the boy scout is what? Be prepared. Not far, far different from a Methodist, right? The boy scout would say be prepared to serve and Methodist would say be prepared to preach, pray and die. Right? That's what John Wesley would say. Anyway, a great welcome to all of you. Let us send ourselves. Perhaps after the glitter of Christmas has faded and the merriment of the new year has declined, we need to be reminded that the light of Christ still shines if we will only open our eyes and step out in faith. Perhaps in these past frigid Arctic days of February, we need to be reminded what shape true power takes. Power in a manger. Power as people's ailments are cast out with a simple word. Power in the resurrection of the body. On this second Sunday of February, we continue to celebrate and acknowledge Black History Month as we salute Fifth Avenue Charter Boy Scouts of America Troops 780 and 6780. Thank you. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.
that you please rise as you are able. Gathered in his name of Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and blessed by God. O oh God, our own God, how wonderful it is in your name in all the earth. In the name of the healer, the provider, and the enabler, let us let your gratitude and joy be made known. O oh God, our own God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Holy God, creator of the universe, of all that is seen and unseen, today we give thanks and praise for all that you have done, all that you, have, all that you will be, even in times of doubts and questions, you are with us and we are thankful. Help us to center ours and peace um, during this time. May we feel the breath of your spirit upon our hearts this morning. May we experience the living Christ in the words we say and hear, the music we sing, the hands we touch. Come, Holy Spirit, come. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Great news. God continually shows us another way. God's mercy is as wide as the oceans. God's desire to forgive is as strong as the mighty wind. So let your hearts receive this, the outpouring of God's loves through the Holy Spirit. The good news is that God's love is an unconditional love, a love that never fails, that never forgets, that always forgives. In Christ Jesus, hear our conditions.
He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but do justice, and to love, kind, love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> the gospel reading is taken from gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. I'm reading from Matthew's gospel. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain 
And after he sat down, his disciples came to him and then he began to speak and taught them saying, Blessed are those poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. And blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they will receive mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And for blessed are those when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the community at Fifth Avenue. If I give a brief introduction to myself, my name is Jerome Sahabandu. I am originally from Sri Lanka. You, those of you know hands are where Sri Lanka is in the world map. Not very many though. Not here, when I, when I talk outside. People don't know, because it's a tiny little island, right? Anybody has ever been to that country? As a tourist? Right. A place to go. That's what I'm promoting now, right? A place to go. Uh, it's called heaven on earth. <laughs> Literally, it's called heaven on earth. And that's where I come from. I, have, I would like to say a brief uh, description about where I grew up. I grew up in a village. That entire village is Methodist. And to tell you how it looks like, for our Sunday school, we have about 400 children. <laughs> it's a big school. And all run by volunteers. And I grew up in that Sunday school. And our church uh, is a village church, and that's where I grew up. I was part of all the activities in the church when I grew up, and then I offered for the ministry through that church in Sri Lanka. And then I went to seminary uh, in Sri Lanka, to study for theology and ministry and ordain as a minister of the Methodist Church of Sri Lanka. So I served many parishes, many places in Sri Lanka as a minister in rural, suburban, uh, urban areas, as a pastor for a long time. Then church asked me to serve in the seminary for a while. Uh, Yes, because when in the Methodist system is such that if bishop asks, you have to just go. Is that right? right? You just have to go, right? That's the Methodist system. So uh, our conference, in our case, the conference asked me to go to seminary. Kind of also realized I had the passion for teaching ministry, my gift of teaching. Okay, let me offer that for the wider church. Because seminary is an ecumenical church where we have Baptist, Methodist, Anglicans, Presbyterians all study in the same seminary. So I served there. And brief about Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a multi-religious country where most communities are Buddhist. Uh, over 75% population are Buddhist. Have you heard of Buddhism? Right. And Hinduism, and the second re religion. And the Muslim, the Islam is the third religion. And Christianity is 
the last one, which is 7%. And out of 7%, uh, five, five and five and a half percent are Roman Catholics, and rest is Protestant community. So Methodist Church is part of that small community, but very vibrant. When the missionaries came to Sri Lanka from Ireland, I see Irish connection in this church. Hands up. I see some. Yeah, here we go. Right? So Irish and Meth uh, English missionaries came to Sri Lanka with the gospel. And this spread out all over Sri Lanka, starting schools and hospitals and medical centers, and spread the gospel. And I'm a fruit of that. I'm a fruit of that missionary movement. My first school was a Methodist school. I always remember that. So here we are. Now we are backwards. Missionaries coming from global south to here, right? To the northern hemisphere, right? Reverse missionary movement. So I'm being blessed to part of um, Wisconsin Annual Conference. I first came to uh, US as a, a missionary theologian, served in Atlanta, uh, uh, General Board of Global Ministries in Atlanta, Georgia. So after my term is over, so I afford to continue to be ministry here because I have my family, my wife, and three children and they're going to school and college, so I want to continue my ministry here. Here I am in Wisconsin. So from Hotlanta to Wisconsin, right? <laughs> it's just a joke. So I'm glad to be here, friends, today. I'm very, very glad. It's a great thing. I really appreciate Reverend Clarissa taking over my invitation to come to Emmanuel to celebrate Black History Month, and very glad to be here with you celebrating Boy Scouts and celebrating, continue to celebrate Black History Month, Blessed Community theme with you. Would you like to pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Today I want to reflect, continue to reflect on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. What we just heard, the first part of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are very special part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And when Jesus was living at that time, some people thought the happiness come from um, come through pleasure, accumulation, and pleasure. I think we can connect that too. Even in our world today, people still think that happiness only comes through pleasure. But Jesus is teaching uh, different message. Folks, no. Happiness, and Jesus used a new word for that. What is the word Jesus used? The blessedness, right? The blessedness. Actually, Christians should speak about that more. The blessedness. Jesus spoke about this blessedness comes from a different lifestyle. If you live a different, radical, different lifestyle, based on love and meekness, humility, this blessedness will spread in the world. That is how you are becoming part of a blessed community, beloved community. So I appreciate our conference, our church, United Methodist Church, receiving us as missionary pastors to be part of that blessed community. I appreciate you are celebrating Boy Scout movement as part of that blessed community. I appreciate your church 
celebrating Black History Month as part of that blessed community, kingdom community. That community is based on love, based on peace, and based on joy in the heart. So what I'm going to do today is speak to just two verses of the Beatitudes. The blessedness come from. Because you need to have about at least a couple of days to talk about all the Beatitudes. I can do that, but not here in the United States. If I preach or teach in Sri Lanka, I can preach three hours. But not here. I learned that in a hard way. Yes, right. Let's go. So, with the first one, I'm sure you all have heard this one. We just heard in the common translation. Blessed are those who mourn. What next? They shall be comforted. Right? That's what we hear. But I heard a different interpretation for that. I'm going to share that with you. Very interesting interpretation. You know, the word Holy Spirit, before Jesus left the earth, he said, I will send my comforter. Right? Remember? Comforter. The Holy Spirit. In the Bible, the original translation for the word Holy Spirit is the parakletos. Parakletos means comforter. Actually, if you go a little further in the biblical scholarship, it could be translated as an advocate. He will advocate. When we are in trouble, Holy Spirit will advocate for you. When we are confronted persecution, Holy Spirit will advocate for you. I am sure all of us are present here has gone some trial and tribulation in their life. Hands up. Yes, I can have my both hands up. You know, a lot. But Holy Spirit is right there for you. Is that right? That's our testimony. Holy Spirit will advocate for you. That's the word used. Parakletos means advocate for you. So here is the translation. The blessed are those who mourn. They will be advocated on behalf of. Here's the challenge. It is absolutely nothing wrong offering comfort to the victims. You are doing that, which is great. Keep doing that. And also, if you are a victim, people have comforted you, which I received a lot. When I have been a victim in many times, people come and comfort me. Nothing wrong in that. It might be the very first response. Comfort. Now, you see what is happening in Turkey and Syria, right? When that kind of uh, earthquake, catastrophe, devastation happened, what is the first response? Comfort the living. The other day I saw a heart-touching picture of a, a baby is next to her sister. She is also very young, but she is trying to feed her sister. Her comfort. Have you seen that picture, anybody? That's going through the social media. It's a real picture. And a, maybe a five-year-old sister is trying comfort, offering comfort, opening her cloth, shirt, and trying to feed the, her sister, who is very, very young, infant. Comfort. People offer comfort. And that's the first response. But here is the thing. If someone consistently substitutes comfort for advocacy, we need to be asking this question. Whose interests are served in the process? Whose needs are undermined? One of my favorite uh, biblical scholars, Walter Brueggemann, says in a recent church, a new piece, 
we should refuse to be comforted in the face of social failure if we apply this insight to be attitudes it would mean refusing to be in business of comforting the oppressed when they actually need something more than comfort if we consistently privilege the comfort over advocacy we will end up comforting the oppressor rather than the oppressed turning once weeping on to joy takes advocacy not advocacy instead of comfort but in addition to it you get my point comfort is good continue to do that continue to receive that that's good that's kind of mother teresa call you know comfort the people who are in need but take that next step paraclet the advocate be an advocate for justice be an advocate for peace be an advocate for righteousness be an advocate for change be the salt of the earth and be the light of the world that take the next step sometimes we are anxious we are nervous but lord is there with us with you and me to take that step therefore you can translate that verse now blessed are those who mourn and they shall be advocated on behalf of is that wonderful go with that verse today when you go home read that verse again blessed are those who mourn and they will be advocated on behalf of and do your part do my part and pr- pray to the holy spirit holy spirit help you to be to comfort as well as advocate for others advocate for the rights of other people who are in need that is how we are becoming a blessed community so that is what jesus spoke about as i said in the beginning happiness by pleasure and accumulation this is preaching a different message this happiness come by service serving the other like boy scouts who want to serve the nation serve the other serve the people in need that is the call of the united methodist that is the call of all the christians to be part of that blessed community building that blessed community my friends the second beatitude i want to talk through is blessed are the poor in spirit and theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are the poor in spirit theirs is the kingdom of heaven and what language jesus spoke when jesus was on earth guess yes i'm impressed very impressed i didn't know when i till i go to seminary jesus spoke aramaic all right jesus did not speak greek even though the bible the new testament is written in greek in greek and jesus perhaps spoke hebrew well, this is a dialect of this wider arabic languages semitic languages we call it and this is pretty much for the daily daily uh, language daily usage he spoke arabic so arabic word for poor in spirit is anawim i would like for you to have a learning point repeat that word with me anawim a n a w i m anawim is blessed are the poor in spirit the poor in spirit call anawim so in the bible anawims who are the anawims because when jesus spoke these words jesus remember all the history of the bible where jesus was a jew uh, grew in a jewish family learn everything from mary and joseph a uh, very faithful jewish people right in live in galilee so he learned this from the parents those things and by himself 
Jesus learned these things. This is not something new Jesus is inventing. But Jesus is speaking, these are the anavims in the scripture that Jesus is speaking. First one, anavims are the little ones. You remember that little one to him belong. The little flock of the Lord. That is the anawim. Why the child is very special in Jesus' hearts? Child always depends on father and mother or the guardian or the parent. Like in that picture I mentioned, these two children are waiting somebody to come and take care of them. You are part of the kingdom of God if you are like that. Meaning, if you have that sense, I am depending on the Father, Abba Father, Father God, always, always, always. Children like to play, dance, sing, create things, and they are able to uh, cross the boundary. I remember uh, when I was doing my postgraduate studies at Trinity College Dublin, my daughter was small, and he was about four years, uh, perhaps five years old, so we used to go to uh, Dunleary Beach, right, to play. So my my wife is very keen that uh, my daughter learn Sri Lankan language, Sinhalese, while in Ireland, because children pick up very quickly, and in fact she pick up Dublin accent. Tell you, uh, we couldn't understand a word what she was telling. And that's a hard time. So she started to speak Sri Lankan language in the beach to her friends, Sinhalese. And her friends, I don't know whether they spoke Gaelic or Dublin accent or what, they understood each other. They played hours. So you know, can my wife, my wife, you know, and I was like, wow, children transcend the cultural, national, racial barriers. Right? Beautiful thing. We adults spoil them, corrupt them, put the idea of racial things into their head. Be like a child. That's why Jesus said, my friends, Jesus said very clearly, if you enter into the kingdom of God, be like a child that's the anavi blessed are the poor in spirit that's the kingdom of God and my last point is there's another community in the bible who are anavim called the broken hearted the broken hearted ones are the ones who seek forgiveness always from God and from others I'm sure all of us are part of that community. But here in the Bible, we have this prime example, uh, Psalmist, Psalm 51. Lord, I come to you as a broken hearted. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. If you can identify as part of that community, you are an Anawim. Ask God's forgiveness and ask the forgiveness from others. And also offer forgiveness to others as well. But there was also another aspect to it, the forgiveness. That forgiveness is you ask forgiveness from God like Jesus asked at the cross. What Jesus asked, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are 
doing. So in fact, Jesus asks forgiveness for other people's sin. Sometimes you have to do that. You ask forgiveness for other people's sins. That's the way. So friends, this is my message today. Let's go back. We are building the blessed community. Not by ourselves, but with the help of God, help of the Holy Spirit, help of our Lord Jesus. Everywhere we live, as Methodists, as Christians, we build that blessed community. That's our call. In that community building, let us appreciate what we learn today. Let us be comforters of the people who mourn. But more than that, one step more, let us be advocate for them. For justice, peace, righteousness, for the truth. Let us take that step. Courageous step. We can do that with the power of God. Secondly, let us be anavims. Ask God's forgiveness. Come to the Lord as broken hearted. Help who are already broken hearted, help them to come to the Lord. You are an anavim. And forgive others. Ask forgiveness from others. And ask forgiveness from the Lord the sins others have committed. You have become a blessed community. That's very different from the lifestyle that Jesus lived. Happiness by grabbing and accumulation is the way of the world. But the blessedness by sharing, by be the salt of the earth, by be the light to the world, that is Jesus' call today. My prayer is, our Lord is there as we sang, the risen Lord encouraging you and me to become one in that blessed community. Amen. Friends, it is the time for invitation for us to share our blessings that God has given to us. God has given to us so many blessings. We are grateful we are so blessed. That's what we talk about. Blessed community. In that spirit, let us bring our tithes and offerings and bring ourselves to the Lord's ministry and service as uh, we sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> From whom all blessings flow, praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Who have met you on the mountaintop. We have each had our holy encounters with you, and in those moments we have wanted to stay on the mountaintop and retreat from the world. We know that is our longing, not yours. So as we offer our gifts this morning in response to your blessings of our, in our life, remind us that our mission begins as we leave this place. And help us hold our memories of those on the mountaintop encounters with you in our hearts. We pray boldly in Jesus' name. Amen.
Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nation with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence. From the shadows into your radiance, by the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness. Ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored here may our lives tell our story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Land with the Father's glory, play, Spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. been fed with God's word in our lives. We have been nourished by God's living water. We have been called to proclaim God's abundance with the world. We have been called to live in grace and gratitude of God's unending love. Go from this place with the confidence that you are loved. You are blessed and you are sent. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, we as a community, a blessed community, ready to go to God's word. Before we go, once again, let us bless our church's Boy Scouts crew. And they are part of our blessed community. And they are a blessing to many in this nation. Let us acknowledge that, recognize that, and appreciate that. And we too now, after listening to God's word, continue to be part of that blessed community. Holy Spirit is with us in that our journey to be a blessed community, my friends. Let us hear the words of Prophet Micah, that resounding words. 
What does the Lord require of you? To love mercy. To act justly. And walk humbly with the Lord. With your God. Friends, let us go in peace. And serve the Lord. We are pray free. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. And enjoy Super Bowl.